Lishana Tova. When I was 16 years old, I had an amazing opportunity. My father's business took him all over the world, and one of the doctors that he worked with lived in Spain and knew I was studying Spanish and said, send her to me for the summer. She can live with my family and really improve her skill. My father protested this was too much of a kindness, and he responded, amigo, I have nine children. I won't even know she's there. <laughs> So off I went, and I lived in Pamplona for a couple of months. And this family, you might have guessed, was Catholic. So I would go with them to church every Sunday. And the first Sunday we went, the uh, six-year-old, she noticed that I didn't genuflect in front of the altar. So she asked me why. And I responded, soy judía, I'm Jewish. What I didn't know is that in that part of the Iberian Peninsula, the slang word for green bean is hudia. <laughs> and it took us a few weeks to figure out her confusion because you see, she had no context. She had never met a Jewish person before. Children learn language through context. And it turns out that biblical scholars sometimes figure out the meaning of words in the text through context. They compare it to other places in the Bible where the word appears, and they get a sense of what it must mean. But occasionally, we get a hapix legomena, a word that only appears once in the entire Bible. And then they have to take their best guess. So tonight, right before we read our Amidah, the opening Amidah of 5775, we had a hapex legomena. If you'd like to follow along on page 10, I'll tell you a little more about it. We sang, Tiku v'chodesh shofar, bakesa leyom chagenu. Bakesa is a mystery word, which is an awesome way to start these 10 days of awe with a mystery. No one knows exactly what kesa means. And the reason it's wonderful to start these words of the Amidah in a mysterious way is none of us know where these 10 days of awe will take us. We don't yet know what this year's high holiday experience will be for us. Let's look at a couple of the common translations for Kesa. The first translation is hidden. And indeed, if you go outside tonight and you look up into the sky, the moon is hidden. This is a new moon festival. Many of the festivals fall when the moon is a full orb, but not tonight. And it's a lot like the central mitzvah of the high holidays, which is tshuva. On Pesach, I can see someone sit down and munch their matzah. And on Sukkot, I can be fully aware if they're dwelling in a sukkah, but I have no idea what is happening in the recesses of your heart. Just like the night sky tonight, tshuva is a hidden and personal process. The other meaning of this word kese is appointed. And we learn in Sefer HaChinuch, of course you need to appoint time for tshuva. Because really, who would want to dredge up all of the terrible things that you've done this year? If it was up to us, we'd put it off. If God were a dentist, Rosh Hashanah would be his assistant, who cheerfully says at the end of your appointment, and when would you like to schedule the next one? <laughs> we need an appointed time to do tshuva because it's not an easy thing to do. Now, I became curious about this verse in its fuller context. Not only can we learn what a word means by doing comparisons in other places in the Bible, but sometimes we get a better sense of what a verse means in our prayer book if we go back and look at the entire psalm. And what I found is there were many allusions in Psalm 81 to the process of tshuva. The first one was, I hear a language that I do not understand which doesn't mean the hours of Hebrew that we are about to embark upon together. What it means is the language of the heart. Sometimes when we're sitting in shul, 
we get these thoughts or feelings that rise up in us that have been waiting to be discovered all year, and in the quiet and solitude of prayer, we don't even know where they come from, and it's an opportunity for us to examine what's going on with me. I didn't even know that this was an issue. I didn't know that this was bothering me. We hear a language that we don't understand, but if we give it time and reflection, we can. Psalm 81 also says, I will answer you from the hidden place of thunder. That is God, obviously, answering us. And there are moments in the service, all these Hebrew words and melodies come floating by, and then suddenly something catches at our heart, and it echoes in us. That is God answering us. You'll see, it happens for everyone every year. There's something you hadn't noticed before about the service that jumps out at you and speaks to your heart. And I would advise you, when God is answering you through these prayers, through the secret place of thunder, that you take a moment to savor those words or that melody. Don't feel the need to rush on with the rest of the congregation. Listen. All right, so why did they have to choose this particular verse of Psalm 81? If there were these other allusions throughout the psalm that hint at the process of tshuva, why did they choose the psalm about that which is hidden? Why did they choose keseh? Well, hope is hidden. This is not a full moon holiday of joy like Sukkot. This is a holiday of courage and optimism. And by definition, you can't be hopeful if you know the outcome. You can only be hopeful if you don't quite yet know what will happen. My hope for you is that this will be a powerful experience. And as the moon starts to wax and strengthen in its light, you will feel a process of realizations, rejuvenation, and rededication to the best of yourself. L'shanah tovah.